Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs, wherein we pick up some important financial topics and we discuss them with the help of different questions. So, before moving on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever a new video comes up. You can also join our Telegram group, the link is in the description below. The free PDFs of these sessions will be available on that very group only. Moving on to the first question then, which says, who is the longest serving governor of Reserve Bank of India? If you are aware, recently, uh, Sri Shakti Gandha Das has been reappointed as the governor of RBI. And if he uh, completes this very tenure, he would be the uh, he would be one of the longest ser serving governors of RBI uh, in past few decades and second longest serving governor in the RBI's history. So he is not yet the uh, longest serving governor. Who has been the longest serving governor of RBI? The answer is option E, Sir Benigil Rama Rao. He has served as a governor for RBI for around 8 years. Okay, Between 7 to 8 years his, is his uh, serving tenure as a governor. Uh, and uh, recently, as I mentioned, Sri Shakti Kanta Das has been appointed, reappointed as the RBI governor for three more years. Okay, And once he completes this term, he would be the longest serving governor in almost seven decades and second longest in the RBI's history. Sir Benny Galrama Rao, uh, he was a member of the Indian Civil Service and he has been the longest serving member of Central Bank. And his tenure as a RBI governor lasted from July 1949 to July 1957. So these seven to eight years he has served as a as the governor of RBI. Sri Shakti Kanta Das was appointed as RBI's 25th governor. So Mr. Shakti Kanta Das, ye jo the, ye RBI ke 25th governor the aur inko ab reappoint kar diya gaya hai. And his reappointment will begin from the December. Okay, so before him, who was the governor? Before him, Mr. Urjit Patel was the governor of RBI. And the reappointment of Mr. Shakti Kanta Das is of three years and it will be effective from 10th December. So three years from 10th December or if any other further orders come up, whichever is earlier, that will be the time period for which he will be serving as the RBI's governor. Okay, so this was the first news piece which I wanted to discuss. Now, moving on to the second question which says, which of the following are the major concerns associated with microfinancing as addressed by Sri M. Rajeshwar Rao in his latest speech at a conference on revitalizing financial inclusion? So if you remember in one of the sessions, I talked about microfinancing. A consultation paper was released by RBI where RBI talked about the, my, what is microfinancing, what are the major concerns in that area and it came up with certain regula proposed regulation for handling this set of problems associated with the microfinancing sector. So recently there was a conference whose topic was revitalizing financial inclusion and our deputy governor Mr. Rajeshwar Rao, he considered that microfinancing can play a very very important role as well as the financial inclusion is concerned. So he referred to that consultation paper, he talked about what is microfinancing, what is its role for our economy, how can it be helpful, what are the concerns in this area and what RBI is thinking to do to deal with these concerns. So Joe's consultation paper mein baat ki gai thi, usi ki reference yaha di gai hai is very speech mein. So um, top, this topic of microfinance is important, it can be uh, asked in your exam. So I'll be discussing this very speech of him. Uh, his, this very speech I'll be discussing. A descriptive question might be asked on microfinancing. So you should be aware about the basic concept of microfinancing, concerns associated with this sector and how RBI is thinking to deal with them. Let's discuss that very speech, then we'll come back to this question. Okay. So talking about the, his, this very speech, the topic of the conference or the theme was to revitalize financial inclusion. 
what he said was that uh, considering the pandemic situation where pe- there has been a lot of loss of livelihoods people have faced a lot of hardships due to the pandemic so there is a need to push financial inclusion objective to increase the micro credit in the economy and this can be done through micro financing so micro financing ke hai hai can help the vulnerable and the disadvantaged sections of the society who have been worst hit by the pandemic सो उनका मानना है कि माइक्रो फाइनेंस जो है वो काफ़ी हेल्पफुल होगा उन लोगों की हेल्प करने में जो डिसएडवांटेज सेक्शन है सोसाइटी के वॉलरेबल सेक्शन है पुअर लो इनकम ग्रुप्स पीपल हैं जिनको पैंडमिक की वजह से काफ़ी ज़्यादा नुकसान हुआ है सो वॉट इज माइक्रो फाइनेंस ही हैज़ डिस्क्राइब दैट एज वेल माइक्रो फाइनेंस इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सर्विस विच प्रोवाइड्स स्मॉल लोन्स एंड फाइनेंशियल सर्विस टू दी पुअर एंड लो इनकम हाउस होल्ड so micro finance as the name suggests finance basically means all the financial activities lending offering credit or offering other financial service micro means catering to a small segment so the there are people who belong to the low income groups the poor people the vulnerable groups the disadvantaged sections of the society they need the financial services okay so catering specifically to their needs providing them with the small loans with financial services is the very objective of microfinance microfinance hai ek particular chote uh, sector pe focus kar raha hai jo easily loans nahi obtain kar pate easily financial services nahi obtain kar pate because they belong to a poor section of society or a low income group okay so microfinance is basically an economic tool which has been designed to promote financial inclusion it will help in making sure that the financial services reach each and every person at a lower cost okay even the low income households the unbanked sections of the society the poor sections of the society so what it focuses on how it is going to address the problem of financial inclusion it will enable the poor and the low income households to come out of poverty it will help them raise the loans use that in farming in businesses in running their small businesses increasing their income levels improving their standard of living so unko easily credit available ho jaye us credit ko us chote chote business mein apne chote business mein use kare apne farming agriculture purpose ke liye use kare taki unki incomes badh sake unka standard of living improve ho sake this will help assist the vulnerable group the women empowerment and community development so it will cater to some specific sectors who are otherwise not able to raise the funding or get the access to the financial services okay uh, the women, women focusing particularly on the vulnerable groups or particularly on the women segment on developing the community so particular sector ko ye cater karke unme financial services pahunchayenge now talking about how the micro credit is delivered kaise jo financial services hai ye low and poor income uh, poor and low income group people tak pahunchenge there are variety of institutional channels that can be used to make sure that these services are delivered to these sections of the society so how it can be done it can be done through the scheduled commercial banks through the small finance banks through the regional rural banks through business correspondents self help groups cooperative banks nbfcs micro finance institutions so nbfcs uh, nbfc micro finance institutions are there other micro finance institutions are there through all these channels micro credit is delivered so commercial bank small finance bank rural bank nbfcs cooperative banks self help groups sab milke micro credit provide karne ki taraf work karte hain taki financial inclusion ka objective fulfill ho sake now coming to the main segment of this speech and very important thing con- uh, associated with the microfinance sector is the concerns the problems growing on in this very sector kuch problems hain jo aur badh rahi hain grow kar rahe hain kuch major concerns hain microfinance sector ke jisko address karne ki zarurat thi RBI ne apne consultation paper mein bhi in concerns ki baat ki thi aur kuch regulations bhi suggest kiye the इन कंसर्नस को डील करने के लिए इन प्रॉब्लम्स को एड्रेस करने के लिए सो so, अब हम वो कंसर्नस और वो जो भी रेगुलेशन प्रपोज किए गए हैं वो डिस्कस करेंगे इस स्पीच में भी वो कंसर्नस और वो प्रपोजल्स हाईलाइटेड हैं सो वील बी डिस्कसिंग द कंसर्नस गोइंग ऑन इन द माइक्रो फाइनेंस सेक्टर विच वर ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट इन द कंसल्टेटिव डॉक्यूमेंट रिलीज बाई आर बी आई वेर ही इवन वेर आर बी आई इवन सजेस्टेड दैट वॉट रेगुलेशन शुड बी फॉलो टू एड्रेस दीज कंसर्नस so the first and the most highlighted concern is that of over indebtedness and multiple lending so let's see what is it what is it all about 
The protection of small borrowers has been enshrined in the NBFC microfinance institution regulations, which do not permit more than two NBFC MFIs to lend to the same borrower. Besides, there is also regulatory ceiling on the maximum amount that can be lent to microfinance borrower. So what they are saying, they are saying that NBFC microfinance institutions, which help provide this uh, credit facility, financial facilities to various low income groups uh, and the poor sections of society, they have made this rule that two NBFCs cannot lend to a same borrower. That means one borrower can borrow amount from only one NBFC MFI. And there is also restriction on how much amount they can borrow. So, a limit is that one borrower will not borrow NBFC from one NBFC. It is not that you will borrow from any NBFC MFI. And one NBFC MFI will borrow from one NBFC MFI. There is also restriction that it will not be able to borrow from one NBFC MFI. What is it? That there will not be an over-indebtedness. That one person will get so much amount to get the maximum loan. So, what is the problem? The problem will come up when this borrower can take loan from various places. So, if he will uh, get multiple lending from multiple lenders, he might borrow a lot. And a time might come where he might not be able to repay because he becomes over indebted. So, these regulations, these regulations which have been mentioned above are just for NBFC MFIs. And NBFC MFIs just constitute around 30% of the total microfinancing provided. 70% is still provided through the other means which are existing. Okay, so this is why small borrowers are able to get multiple loans from several lenders and when they are getting multiple lending, it contributes to their over indebtedness where they are not able to repay and then the lenders engage themselves in the coercive recovery practices. So what they are saying? They are saying that restrictions are there but they are just for NBFC MFIs and uh, there are 70% other institutional channels used to provide microfinance on whom these regulations are not available or these in, uh, these uh, very regulations are not applicable basically. So when they are not applicable, that borrower takes borrowing from various places and then he becomes over indebted. These are two restrictions that you can borrow one lender from one lender so that you can not raise borrowing and you can not raise so much amount of money, this is only for NBFC and MFI. They are only 30% of microcredit or microfinancing facilities. 70% of the other institutional channels come from now. So what happens is that one borrower takes a loan from one place, the other from the other, and then he becomes over-indebted. Then there are such situations that he can't repay. When he can't repay, he needs his money back to the lenders. He can use the use of coercive practices to recover his money. That's the concern going on in the microfinance sector. Now, what are the advantages of this concern going on in the microfinance sector? Now, talking about what RBI suggested to do, uh, solve this problem. Okay, so RBI has suggested that there is a need to focus on repayment capacity of the borrower rather than just considering the indebtedness of NBFC MFIs. We don't focus on NBFC MFIs. We have overall borrowing capacity or repayment capacity of the borrower. Focus on How we are going to focus on it? By uh, providing a common definition of microfinance loans. Uh, which will be uniformly applicable to all lenders linking loan amount to the household income. So if we change the uh, overall definition as to how much a person can borrow, it can help solve this problem. Let's see how. The proposal is that the payment of interest and repayment of principal for all outstanding loans should not be more than 50% of household income. So what they are saying, if a borrower is there, he is borrowing, Okay, there will be overall limit on his borrowing that he will not pay more than 50% of his household income on these interest and principal payments. If a borrower is raising a loan, when he will pay his money, when he will pay his interest, when he will pay his principal, the amount of his household income should not be more than 50% of his household income. उसके पास कुछ इनकम तो बचनी चाहिए जिससे वो अपना डेली एक्सपेंसेस और बाकी एक्सपेंसेस कर पाएगा इफ ही स्पेंड इस इंटायर इनकम इंटायर हाउसहोल्ड इनकम ऑन प्रीपेइंग द लोन्स हाउ विल ही मैनेज द डेली एक्सपेंसेस और अदर एक्सपेंसेस ऑफ हिज लाइफ ओके सो दिस रिस्ट्रिक्शन इफ इस इंपोज देन इट कैन हेल्प डील विद दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इंडेक्टनेस 50 परसेंट से ज़्यादा उसको रीपे नहीं करना पड़ेगा तो वो बेसिकली ज़्यादा जगह से लोन ही नहीं रेस कर पाएगा ओवर इंडेक्टेड ही नहीं होगा 
उसकी जितनी पेइंग कैपेसिटी है वट एवर इज इज पेइंग कैपेसिटी ही विल हैव टू पे अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट ओनली सो इफ वी रिस्ट्रिक्ट दी पेमेंट ऑफ लोन टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ दी हाउस होल्ड इनकम दिस ओवर इंडेटनेस प्रॉब्लम कैन बी सॉल्व कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम दैट इज ऑफ प्राइजिंग ऑफ द माइक्रो फाइनेंस लोन ओके सो द बोरोज आर नॉट एबल टू बोरो एट अ चीपर प्राइज प्राइजेज आर स्टिल हाई एज फर एज द माइक्रो फाइनेंस लोन आर कंसर्न why so see if i talk about nbfc mfis there is restriction on how much can be the interest rate charge it can be lower of the two first either cost of funds plus 10% margin for nbfc mfis if the loan does not exceed if the loan exceed 100 crore and if for other kinds of loans it's 12% okay and the second is that 2.75 times of the average base rate of the five largest banks so this is the ceiling on the interest rate okay the interest rates charge cannot be more than this so what's the problem the problem is that this regulatory ceiling is just for nbfc mfis now when this ceiling has been provided that interest rates should be lower of the two okay so this rate is considered as a benchmark for nbfc mfis and other institution as well while lending so nbfc mfis jo hai wo kya karti hai wo isi rate pe lend karti hai aur जो बाकी लेंडिंग फर्म्स हैं जिनके लिए ये रेट प्रिस्क्राइब नहीं है वो भी इसको अपना बेंचमार्क मार्क के मान के इसी इंटरेस्ट रेट पे लोन्स देती हैं अब वो फर्म्स या वो लेंडिंग लेंडर्स जो हैं वो हो सकता है और कम कॉस्ट पे प्रोवाइड कर पाते हैं लोन्स उनकी कंपैरेटिवली जो कॉस्ट ऑफ फंड है वो लोअर है लेकिन फिर भी वो इसी रेट पर लेंड करते हैं इसी हायर रेट पर लेंड करते हैं और कुछ ऐसी एन बी भी हैं जो बहुत बड़े स्केल पे फंक्शन कर रही हैं दे आर गेटिंग द बेनिफिट ऑफ इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल जिस वजह से उनकी ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ फंड्स कम है फिर भी वो लोअर ऑफ दीज टू रेट्स पे ही लोन्स देते हैं बल्कि वो और कम पे भी दे सकते हैं जिस वजह से बोरोवर को नुकसान होता है कि उसको कम रेट पर फंडिंग अवेलेबल नहीं हो पाती एक कॉम्पिटिटिव प्राइजिंग प्रॉपरली फॉलो नहीं हो पाती जिससे कि बोरोवर को फायदा हो दैट्स दी कंसर्न गोइंग ऑन इन दिस सेक्टर so the concern is that this rate has been provided provided for the nbfc mfis and other lending companies or other lenders are also using this rate their interest rate at which they are providing the loans also hover around this ceiling so because of which they are not providing the loans at a lower cost to the borrower even if their cost of funds is less they are using this lending rate as a benchmark rate okay even there are some nbfc mfis which have increased in their size grown are having economies of scale are having lower cost of funds despite of that they are using this lending rate only which has been prescribed okay they are not uh, providing the loans as a, at a reduced rate although they can because of which the borrowers are getting deprived of benefit of enhanced competition and thus they have to pay more so we have to focus on catering to this problem and making sure that the borrowers get funds at a lower rate okay so what rbi has suggested it has suggested to do away with this prescribed ceiling okay and mandate all lenders to have a board approved policy for interest rates to be charged so is rate ko ye jo ceiling hai isko hata diya jaye aur apni apni lenders to have board approved policy banaye ki kis rate pe hame ek borrower ko lend karna hai okay the lenders would make available a fact sheet on pricing of microfinance loans disclose the minimum maximum average interest rates which are going which they are going to actually charge okay now there is one other minor concern in this sector that is to ensure customer protection so see uh, now the lenders have lent the amount to the borrowers borrowers might still not be able to repay there might be some adverse situation there might be a natural calamity they might become over indebted or there might be some unforeseen unavoidable adverse circumstance which happens because of which these people are not able to repay the amount okay so in that case what happens whatever assets they have the lenders take away those assets although those assets might not be good enough as a collateral okay but if you take away those basic assets of the borrower which although are not that valuable for the lender but are valuable for the borrower then borrower will somehow have to arrange for different means to repay the amount okay so basically lenders get involved in coercive practices to recover the amount because of which the borrowers suffer so we have to make sure that some protection measures are there for the borrowers so rbi proposed to have collateral free loans 
ये लोग जो है ये अपने असेट्स ऐसा कोलेटरल नहीं दे पाते लेंडर्स को जिस वजह से कुछ बेसिक असेट्स जैसे कि उनके उनका कोई फर्नीचर है या बेसिक हाउस होल्ड आइटम्स हैं जो लेंडर के लिए कोई मायने नहीं रखते कुछ उसको मिलेगा नहीं उससे लेकिन अगर वो उसको ले लेंगे तो बोरोअर उसको वैल्यू करता है तो वो कहीं ना कहीं से पैसा कैसे न कैसे कैसे करके अरेंज करेगा और रीपे करेगा ओके लेंडर को और सिर्फ प्रैक्टिस यूज करके बोरोअर से फिर पैसा रिकवर करते हैं जिस वजह से बेसिकली दैट्स नॉट करेक्ट एज फार एज देयर प्रोटेक्शन इज कंसर्न सो आर बी आई ने सजेस्ट किया है कि कोलेटरल फ्री लोन्स प्रोवाइड किया जाए ये लोग कुछ कोलेटरल तो प्रोवाइड कर नहीं पाते और जो भी इनके बेसिक असेट्स हैं वो भी छीन लिए जाते हैं जिससे कि वो अपना लाइवलीहुड तक सस्टेन नहीं कर पा रहे इसीलिए आर बी आई ने सजेस्ट किया है कि कोलेटरल फ्री नेचर के लोन्स इस सेक्टर को प्रोवाइड किए जाए okay so these were the major concerns and this was what rbi has suggested to help address these concerns so these concerns and these proposals were highlighted in this speech coming back to our question which of the following are the major concerns of microfinance so we know over indebtedness and microfinancing pricing is a concern physical distribution and promotion of microfinance loans is a concern no this is not a major concern first and second are there so answer is option b coming to the last question now it says sebi has barred senior employees and directors of the asset management companies and their trustees from buying or selling mutual funds while having access to any non public information who of the following does not form a part of the access person on whom restrictions are applicable so sebi has come up with certain set of guidelines for the mutual fund sector so let's see what these guidelines are then we'll come back to the question so sebi has come up with these guidelines that are applicable to the asset management companies which are managing the mutual funds okay so what sebi has to say sebi says that all the senior employees the directors the trustees of these asset management companies they will be barred from buying and selling the mutual funds when they have the non public information so the people who are involved in the creation of that mutual fund the senior employees of the company the directors of the company they usually have the knowledge about the uh, mutual fund created which is going to be invested okay that information is still not public and if these people have the access to such information and they buy and sell the mutual fund for their benefit it will be a uh, it will be a unjustified act for other people out there other investors out there who are not having the access to such information okay so what sebi has said is that these people will not be allowed to invest in the mutual funds buy and sell the mutual funds when they have the access to such non public information the curbs extend to purchase and sale of units in mutual fund where employees in the possession of information not communicated to the unit holder so jab mutual fund se associated information company ke senior employees directors ya company ke logo ke paas hai जो इन्फॉर्मेशन अभी तक पब्लिक नहीं हुई है तो उसका फायदा उठा के वो लोग म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट नहीं कर सकते बाइंग एंड सेलिंग नहीं कर सकते क्योंकि वो जस्टिफाइड नहीं होगा बाकी इन्वेस्टर्स के साथ जिनके पास वो इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं है सो काइंड ऑफ इंसाइडर ट्रेडिंग थिंग इज बेसिकली इट्स लाइक यू आर नॉट अलाउड टू बी इन्वॉल्व इन इंसाइडर ट्रेडिंग आपके पास वो इन्फॉर्मेशन है तो आप उसका फायदा उठा उठा के अगर वो इन्वेस्टमेंट uh, करोगे तो वो बाकी इन्वेस्टर्स के लिए सही नहीं होगा तो फिर आप पे पेनल्टीज इम्पोज होंगी दिस इज वॉट सेबी हैज सेट सो द मार्केट रेगुलेटर हैज क्रिएटेड अ कैटेगरी ऑफ एक्सेस पर्सन ऑन होम दीज रिस्ट्रिक्शन विल बी एप्लीकेबल सो हु आर द पीपल हु हार एविंग दी एक्सेस टू सच नॉन पब्लिक इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड कैन यूज इट टू ओवर पा द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ अदर इन्वेस्टर्स सो एक्सेस पर्सन कौन है जिनके पास अनपब्लिश इन्फॉर्मेशन का एक्सेस है जो इन्वेस्ट नहीं कर सकते अब म्यूचुअल फंड में दे इंक्लूड द हेड ऑफ द असेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर्स चीफ इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफिसर चीफ रिस्क ऑफिसर अदर सी एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर्स जैसे सी एफ ओ हो गया सी ई ओ हो गया कोई भी सी एग्जीक्यूटिव सी सीट एग्जीक्यूटिव ओके देन द फंड मैनेजर्स द फंड डीलर्स द रिसर्च द फंड मैनेजर्स डीलर्स रिसर्च एनालिस्ट एम्प्लॉयज इन दपरेशन डिपार्टमेंट कंप्लाइंस ऑफिसर हेड ऑफ डिविजन ये सब ही एक्सेस पर्सन है जो बाइंग एंड सेलिंग म्यूचुअल फंड की नहीं करेंगे अब 
then non executive directors if they are also having the access to such information they also cannot buy and sell the mutual funds created by the asset management company itself okay so these guidelines apply to purchase and sale of all kinds of securities shares debentures bonds derivatives floated by the mutual fund house all right so this is what sebi has said coming back to our question which of who of the following is not under the category of access person executive directors are ceo cfo cro's are fund manager risk deal and dealers are so ye sare hi access persons ki category mein aate hain question was that who of team who of these is not a part of access person so none of them is not a part answer is option e this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much